my guilt state of corruption. The keys to the vault, exactly what I'm giving you. What's in the vault? Well, money. Money of the corruption that's destroying this country. From corrupt politicians, corrupt judges, to drug cartels. For the money they're earning from who they're protecting. In the billions. So there's a commonality. The commonality isn't just that they're corrupt. That they're evil. The problem is, where do we put our money? Where do we hide it? You know, we have dummy corporations and business that do laundering and, and charitable gaming. But this is in the billions. Well, you can hide it in your own credit unions that you control and your banks. Well, wait a minute. If those banks and credit unions are audited, you'll discover the billions from corruption. Not if you own the banking department. Not if you own the banking commission. And each and every one of our states. The keys to the vault that I'm giving you today is the keys to each and every state across this country. I am using the banking department of New Hampshire as a key to the door. We get through there, we get through everybody. Understand that this is a network. The perfect operation of laundering and protecting doesn't get repeated differently because it's perfect. It's the perfect crime. Or is it? Now I want you to think about this. These corrupt politicians they control those banking departments. It's those governors that appoint banking department and the AG and the corrupt AG's office, attorney general's office in each of our states made up of attorneys across your state that have sold their integrity to become judges and then they sell their integrity once again and then they work as department heads across your state such as the banking department and that's what we want to focus on. Now, Shaheen Bill Shaheen, the head of this network corruption, and Sununu, the current governor of the state of New Hampshire. Well, first of all, you have to understand their roots and that the corruption goes back decades. Shaheen, Gene, Senator Gene Shaheen was the governor before. And then after her was Hassan, all controlled by this organization. In fact, Hassan just got busted again with her second age, extorting targeting, just like Shaheen did with me, with my taxes, and the banking department. It's the same methodology. They didn't say they were geniuses, but collectively they have worked the perfect crime. And by extorting the innocent and the people of knowledge, they've driven fear into anybody taking action. You know, like almost everybody. You're going to see an article. Two prominent Arab families in New Hampshire. Who could believe it running for governor? Two Arab families. Well, you know something? Before everybody gets their panties in a bunch, I'm going to show you one article recently. Chris Sununu takes money from three terrorist groups. And if you go on, the family business, they only bought a mountain, Loon Mountain Ski Resort, was financed also by these same terrorist groups. Breitbart puts it up, which is really a Republican favored 
news agency. I found out about it when running for governor in 16, Mayor Gatsis of Manchester, who is owned by the cartel, turns around and brings that to everybody's attention. He's taking money, campaign money from terrorists, and financed his family business. Now his father goes back all the way to George Bush. And before that, the governor of New Hampshire. You see, these bastards play politics. Bush gives Sununu a job, cheapest step, because he has them win New Hampshire. Please, President Trump, these people didn't support you. The Sununus didn't support you. Don't you support them now because you need votes. This isn't just about an election. It's about the promises you make in those elections, like draining the swamp. New Hampshire's still that drug den. And I'm telling you, this is kind of protection is why. Okay? So these two prominent families, you may ask yourself, what's the odds of two Arab families reaching to the two highest positions in the state? Well, I looked. We're less than, we're about approximately a half a percent of 1% Arab. In fact, out of 50 states, we're number 47 for diversity. Isn't that interesting? Yet we're number four for income for minorities. Now, there's a lot of minorities going like this. Wait a minute. Are you saying that minorities in the state of New Hampshire rank fourth across the country in income? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. And 47th in diversity. Now, you may want to consider that for a moment. Now, listen. I know that they're corrupt, absolutely. And I am going to show you that. But it is a reason for concern. In fact, Sununu's father would associate his nationality as Cuban. Okay, so now you know the players. And now I'm going to show you what happened. So we got Sununu running for governor. I was running for governor. They only tried to murder me and destroyed my regist voter registration. And then Van Ostren, who was owned exactly by Shaheen. Okay, so let's go. You're going to see a clip of a radio show, Grok Talk. Okay? Now listen, what I'm presenting to you now is evidence. This isn't just a video of, of exposure. You're going to hear George Lambert, who was a previous state senator, who was no longer a state senator, help write a bill with Kevin Avard, State Senator Avard, who I knew and helped with the promise to help the victims of the largest Ponzi scheme in the state's history. Over 400 victims, vast amount of them, were in the elderly. These were stealing their money at the end of their lives, and it was Shaheen's Ponzi scheme. It was the banking department, Hildreth, who went to go prosecute it. He said, open court. If I get prostituted, I'm sending Shaheen to jail. You'd think that would have, somebody would have asked a question. Well, they didn't. They covered it up. The FBI covered it up. Kakarvis was the prosecutor. The same guy who I told you has been covering up these crimes in part of the cartel. Walker was my lawyer who, who also turned around and covered this up, threatened me by telling me it was Shaheen and sick Kakavis on me as the U.S. attorney to shut my mouth. And you know what? What they did was warn me to shut my mouth and I didn't. And they went after me. And you will see how they tried to silence me in these other pieces. But it's all the same players. The banking department, Walker, Shaheen, and then Sununu. Sununu was the new player. He smelled blood in the water. His words, actually. He intercepted Avard, and this is what happens. So I'm setting this up as you're going to hear George Lambert. We actually get invited to the same radio show. Now tell me that isn't an act of God. This guy was selling his services. They were quieting the victims of FRM for pennies. This was a Sununu operation, and State Senator Little, who became the banking department, and had one more uh, bill to pass. 
and that is to give himself immunity for not auditing these banks and credit unions. You wonder how they would get away with it without being audited? Well, this asshole made it legal. Okay, so this was one giant operation. So you're gonna listen to the clip. This guy confesses Lambert, but he gives me notes from Richard Head, Assistant Attorney General Richard Head, who covered up that Ponzi scheme, who went after me with the Department of Revenue with a forged tax return to use as extortion. You'll see that he used the banking department as to, to, to destroy a notes to allow, and you'll see files that are redacted, to turn around and put them in a position to again to extort me. So do not miss, these notes is evidence, evidence the Attorney General's office knew this Ponzi scheme was operating for years and years before anything was done. They knew these people were victims. They were stealing their money. They knew it was Shaheen's operation. They knew the banking department and knew about it to the point that the people on top were involved in this Ponzi scheme were brothers of Hildreth, the actual banking department. Now watch this brief clip. I already talked to them all and go through witness groups, right? Mm -hmm. George, and don't bullshit. We I'm had not, this conversation. Actually. You know Richard Head's notes? Mm -hmm. You know, the one that knew about the Ponzi scheme in 2003? You know who gave them to me? This guy right here, George Lambert. You know Richard Head's trying to get a summary judgment on me now on, an, uh, on a forged tax return, right? How'd you get those notes, George? from the AG's office. I went and asked him for them. Oh, you went from asking. It only proved that the Ponzi scheme that they knew about at the AG's office and the Banking Commission in 2003. How's that? I and went... do you know why we have those and why George gave them to me? Because it would have given them evidence to overturn FRM, give them pennies on the dollar with the, with the, with the explanation you are not to carry this forward. Do not investigate. George, we had that conversation. In fact, you told me to shut up and we had 12 votes. Or are you going to call me a liar? Well, I actually believe we had 12 votes. Oh, you bet your ass you had 12 votes because it was fixed. That's well, why. What was fixed? The vote was fixed. How did he know the 12 votes already? I am telling you what this is. And that document, by the way, George, well, well, you might be laughing. It's with the Justice Department right now. And I put the case number up on the Internet. How many hits we had downloaded the, the case number to go on to a complaint? 1,000 by 6 o'clock in the morning. Wow, that's My goal is 50,000, which also be a formula how to turn around and, and confront this corruption. Okay, remember now, we're moving in steps. Those notes are evidence. Lambert's a witness, and now so is Little. Now step two. You'll see a copy, a brief copy of these notes. I am giving only copies to the FBI. They're not going to steal these originals. They did steal the originals from the mailings from the IRS. You see? They did steal those pieces. So you're going to know what I have, the FBI. The people are going to see what this is. And you're going to see the text messages that came from Avard, Senator Avard, selling Sununu smell blood in the water. What Sununu did was intercept Avard. Me and Avard, Senator Avard, was going to the Department of Justice in Washington saying they were covering up and they corrupted this hearing to turn around and, and, and stopped any investigations that would lead to the banking department. Remember? Their money. All right, now I want you to see this evidence briefly. Let's look at Richard Head's notes. These are Richard Head's handwritten notes in an interview with Donna Susie. Now Donna Susie is a lawyer for the banking department who was covering up the Ponzi scheme, having an interview with the guy who was covering up the Ponzi scheme from the AG's office. They were working together. You know what these notes say that again are made available will be attached to the end of the video. It says that they knew about the Ponzi scheme in 2003 and some in inclination that in 1999 they referenced that Hildreth, the banking commission, was friends with Gallagher and that Hildreth himself had two brothers on the Ponzi scheme. They knew about the Ponzi scheme. See, that's what they did. You know why these notes came public? They were given to me. Now, you know who they were given to me by? George Lambert. He just announced he's running for governor. Guess what? 
He calls Kevin and goes, Hey, Kevin, this thing went FRM. He goes, Is it true about Lambert and Head? He goes, Wait a minute. Don't file the complaint to the Department of Justice. Send it to the EG's office. What? So as I sent mine to the Department of Justice in Washington, he sent his complaint to the AG's office because this guy told him to. Who's running for government? Right. Now why would he do that? Why would he tell the criminals of the AG that we're turning them in to themselves? Well, they did assign somebody. Right. Dick Tracy. No shit. Dick Tracy is looking for dickhead. Next step. Is that's how you solve a case. You put your pieces together. Doing the laundry. This was the hearing for Commissioner Little. It was his nomination done by Sununu. You see? Knock off the people of FRM. Pass the bill that says that we don't have to audit. And then move the same guy in place to be the commissioner under the the thumb of Sununu. See? Sununu and his family go back a long time in politics. I knew there was a new player in town. I knew we had Shaheen. And now we had Sununu. There's no one cares about you. They care who controls the money. And that banking department was important and that was a piece of this puzzle. Don't miss it. It's that important. So what you see is me confront Sununu. I said, do you want to see the text messages? You intercepted Avard. Now you tell me about somebody's reaction and tell me this guy who didn't answer one question, did not want to get into a debate with me, which is another reason why they didn't want me to be governor. Although, you know something? I'm going to run again. Right. Next year, we got a presidential primary through there. I'm running against you soon. Let's talk. Let's then talk in front of witnesses. Now, what you're going to see at that doing the laundry to my left was the other Democratic governor running, Ben Osterin. He's owned by Shaheen Sununu, owned by the Sununu family, and I don't know, and whatever terrorist groups paying the bills. And the other gentleman to his right was Pappas. Pappas, you hear me say, you know Dick Aganos. He's a member of this cartel, Pappas. The drug cartel is present and accounted for here. It's their money they're hiding in that banking department. You get it? Pappas becomes the congressman. But don't worry. Mayor G Gatsis, who's the one who called out Sununu about the terrorist groups and financing, because they wanted him in there, the drug cartel really prefers their own rather than someone just leveraging them. He backed off because it looked like Sununu was going to win and he had them because he had their money. Well now he's a member of that same council now. See? So everybody's still accounted for. Sununu, Shaheen, drug cartel, everybody accounted for. Now I want you to watch. I called Little out in front of Little called these people on this panel out and said, how is it that Perlow, an assurance defender, is now from the AG's office, who I gave the Ponzi scheme to, is now the banking commissioner? Okay, now watch this video. So my name is Mike Hill, and I own the Mortgage Specials. And I've owned them for 26 years. Now, we were the number one broker, not just only in New Hampshire, but in the United States, multiple years. In addition, Fannie Mae has recognized me and I've done their training videos. So you can say I'm an expert in the mortgage business. Now, Mr. Per Perlow, who recently resigned. You may remember I just called him a drug launderer. He didn't dispute that. He resigned instead. Mr. Perlow, we had spoke, Mr. Pappas, you brought up primary bank. Mr. Sununu, you brought up FRM. Well, you know who reported the scandal of FRM to the AG's office? Well, that would be myself. Right, 2007. You know who I reported it to? 
Assistant Attorney General Perlow. Isn't that interesting? Now, Perlow, by the way, is an insurance defender for McLean Law Firm. Now, seeing that we've taken this time to find out making the proper choice, how did an insurance defender become our banking commission? Because he was covering up the crimes of FRM. The crimes of FRM are important because it brings you into the corruption in the banking department, right? For instance, Mr. Little sits right next to Kevin Abar. Kevin Abar is the one sponsored the bill for FRM. Except for if you remember, and I put it on statecorruption.org, if you all notice, that I said the hearing was corrupted. And what did we have? George Lambert, who worked with Mr. Abart on the bill, confessing on a radio interview with me, telling the, the victims of that to be quiet. In fact, Mr. Sununu, I talked to Mr. Abart, and Mr. Abart was putting together a complaint along with mine to the Department of Justice. You talked him out of it. In fact, you had him put it to the AG's office. Now think about this. Well, I have text messages from Mr. I have the text messages with me. In fact, his exact words was, Sununu smells blood in the water. And when we're done, you can read them to everybody if you'd like. And Mr. A uh, Mr. Abart is not that aware for him, Mr. Sununu. And then, Mr. Sununu, then you called Harry Bean the same day. I spoke to Harry. He said that you guaranteed him that Mr. Head wouldn't have a position on this council. Right? Harry Bean said that on the same day. No, I have those text messages. So this is a power play here. So let's well, remember now, so Kevin Abar with FRM. What happened with FRM? Hildreth, the banking department, own brothers were on the Ponzi scheme. I reported it to Perlow. You're going to make the nexus to Jerry Little, right? Excuse me? You're going to make the nexus. Oh, this is what well, Mr. Little was with Mr. Abar and putting FRM complaint together. Okay. See, this is the move. So what happened? They canceled. The hearing now didn't they? They didn't make a decision on that. And this is the reason why. That is in the way to the banking department. What's happening is the banking department in Pearl is protecting the crop, which involves the drug launderers. Real Estate Credit Union, I called them up. Furley, Florida, who was the assistant banking commissioner during FRM, who became the banking commissioner afterwards, was accused of not going after and protecting the people. We just made him the CFO of Greenwich State Credit Union. Primary bank, front page of the union leader, right? They're not going to sue me. I just called them drug dealers. You know them, right, Mr. Pappas? In fact, you're friends with Mr. Angos, aren't you? Exactly. See what I'm saying? So they are protecting them. They're not federally audited. They're state audited. That's why. That's the secrets in the state comes out in there. Now we had them all scared. They were also afraid I was going to win the election, which is why they tried to murder me three times within a period of 13 days. And the fourth person that they hired, you see a video called Kill Gill. Why don't you listen to it? He was only hired by the cartel to murder me, okay? And refused to contract. Fortunately for me, he says he doesn't do politics. They do. Now you're going to watch Follow the Head. The same Richard Head whose notes protected that Ponzi scheme, the notes that proved it. I went after the AG's office and Head, you know what they gave Head? They gave him a, a last mission, a mission to turn around and go after me with a forged state that takes tax returns to leverage me with the Department of Revenue. Now they had a problem because of the forgery. You know what the other problem is? And why we're connecting with the IRS? IRS, you haven't spoken to me in eight years other than threaten me to take the deal. Now, isn't that so? And run a fake investigation. Now, if you put the two together, you know that I didn't own any money by the, to the DRA, according to the IRS, which is why we had to have a, a forged state tax return so I couldn't see it. So Richard Head and the AG's office had a problem. So they called in the banking department. See, if this corruption owns also your state agencies, such as banking, they can go after my banking license. So what they did was they turned around, and you will see redactions. You will see a hearing that I said that all these documents were redacted. The reason why they were redacted was because it was an attempt to reclassify my tax returns by using the banking department. 
Nobody could see that or they all go to jail. Now I have the redacted and the unredacted. Now they simply said, Tell, make sure you don't show anybody the unredacted. Well, how's the FBI? We're going to give them a copy of both. So not only following, we have Richard Head, his notes, Lambert, Avard, and Little as witnesses to that corruption of the AG's office and protection of the banking department. But we now have those redactions in the attempt to change the classifications. You want to know if it impact them? Richard Head left, went right to California right after that. Perlow, the banking department commissioner, he resigned altogether. That's how dangerous this was. What they do is, when you catch them in a situation that could lead to the, to the host, such as the banking department, AG's office, you cut the lines. That means those guys have got to go. And that's exactly what happened. Now you hear in this that you had an auditor quite literally reading from a paper that was completely redacted and black. I mean, what is this, a magic show? How was she reading? And we couldn't get a copy. But that was us catching them in that attempt. Watch that clip. Um, and I know there's a lot of black on there, so we can we can talk about that in a second. Can you tell us what we're looking at here? This would be the um, kind of the cover page response of the document request. Excuse me, object. Where is this page that we're referring to that's completely redacted? Um, I, I, I just said it, we will explain the redaction in just a moment. Well, how can you explain a redaction that we can't see? I mean, there's a lot of redactions through this whole thing, though, isn't there? Now, why is there so many redactions? I guess Can I ask the hearing on that? Yeah. Why do we have all these redactions? We will find out. Well, it's a cover-up is what it is. Well, and where they came at, that's why it's redaction. Hey, listen, if it's all sealed, why redact, right? Well, Proceed with your questioning, please. Who provided, where did this document come from? Well, wait a minute, object again. Is this the document? Is it's not a document. Four? Is it? It is a document. This is a document. Yes, it is. Completely it's redacted. A... This is a document that we're going to refer to as evidence, right? Then if we are, then it's I don't think anything should be redacted. It's a document that the department is seeking to place in evidence. Oh, I can't use it as evidence in this hearing, and they're even referring to it. A black page. It's up to them to demonstrate and say, explain well, isn't it for me what it is. Well, so how please can you proceed. explain what it is if it's redacted? Please well, proceed. How about we start by saying this? Mr. Gill? Why is it redacted? Please proceed, Attorney uh, We're Wyatt. testifying on evidence that's on a black page. The attorney just stated that she would... Uh, what, have, tell us have what the, it says? Have the witness, te have the witness testify. Well, I don't trust it. Well, There's I want to hear it as well as you do, so why don't well, we continue? I don't continue? want to hear it. I want to see it as they're prescribing it as evidence today. All right. We're putting Duly in noted. evidence that is a black piece of paper that's completely redacted. And uh, can we have, how about this? Does this seem fair to you? I would like her to proceed with the question. Could we have and then this when you unredacted have, when so you she have, can read it, and I can read it at the same time? Does that seem fair? Remember the importance of that evidence. We talked about keys to the vault. Well, there's the evidence that is the key to open it. And the Department of Justice, FBI, U.S. Attorney Lullen, Special Agent in Charge, Bola Fatoa, you have this evidence. And I'm going to keep sending it to you just to make sure we, you don't lose it. All right, now this last piece is you see me confront Jerry Little, the banking commissioner. You hear me turn around and say, I want a copy of my file. Did you look at the file? Oh, I don't know. No, no. Did you? And you can hear, you tell me if this guy isn't lying. That file would have showed us the redactions that I was going for. He was covering up. You'll see that three people, some of which, there was actually four, were from the AG's office. They were watching him every step. Trust me, he's not a genius. He's a weak link to everybody. And he was scared. That's why he passed that bill. Do you know how much information I've got, for instance, on all these auto loans? Get these people in the back, too. 
with all the, did you know that they've been uh, laundering money through that? Drug money? Now you don't want to audit them anymore, right? Isn't that your law? You passed the law. Isn't that your bill? What? Is that your bill? Are you paying me? Oh, I'm paying you. But I'm also sending you to jail. Right? All set? There you go. Thank you. No, don't shake my fucking hand. I'm going to put you in jail. You think, do you assholes think this is funny? You had that hearing right in here, it was fraudulent. You know you have a 91A. You know what that is, right? Yes. Freedom of Information Act. Yes. Have you delivered all my files to the AG's office like you're supposed to? Have you done that? My files. The files that belong to me that would have pertained with that check. Have you sent that to the AG's office like you were supposed to? What? It's my file, right? And you're the banking commissioner. And you did a 91A to deliver that file. Have you done that? I can step in. I'm a little counsel. Well, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm asking Mr. Little here. I, he I knew handle. about it. Did you, did you know about that, Mr. Little? Yes, I knew about it. You knew about it. Did you send it? I'm not sure what the status is. You're not sure? No, I'm not. Did you look through You want my... honesty, right? Well, you, have, you couldn't sneak up on honesty. How about this? Did you look at the file? No. You didn't even look at my file, and you're the banking commission, and I'm making all these accusations that it was false. Did you know all the paperwork was redacted so we couldn't read it? They were changing the classifications of my notes on the DRA, right? Did you know they hit me this week, too? But he was covering that up. So think about this. Every entity that are on my properties that leveraged me, remember? Shaheen and Shaheen with the cartel. Walker, banking department taking my license. You understand? Everybody's in play. And those are all the entities that offered me $50 million. You get it? They offered me that money as an extortion. I refused it. And this is the trail that I followed. And this is evidence. And this is a witness. He covered up that hearing. He covered up those redactions. And the FBI are going to get that audit and those redactions, and that opens the door to investigation. Listen, the first time they tried to murder me, you remember the video, and I'll post it again, no room service. I didn't know why. I went down there to hand off evidence to the National Mortgage Association to investigate Shaheen and Walker with the Ponzi scheme and the corruption in the banking department. What I didn't know was it was the money for the corrupt, it was the money for the cartel. And that's why that computer with Brian Toomey, and you see me going to the FBI with that information, and that cell phone of Brian Toomey, he was their contact inside. They were giving my location to be murdered. You know what they ran? Kakavis, U.S. Attorney Kakavis at the time. Uh, Hassenbecker, FBI agent Hassenbecker, they ran that operation. Katavis traded a felon for, who was caught selling nine automatic assault weapons, his name was Jonathan Irish, to use Eileen Landy, who was already owned by Shaheen as my paralegal, to destroy that computer. This was an FBI operation. Can you imagine the fear that they had? Not of only the communication, <coughs> between the FBI and Toomey, but Walker and Toomey, Shaheen and Toomey, the banking department and Toomey, the IRS and Toomey. Remember the IRS? We got a plant? Well, meet the plant. Now, how's that for a witness? How's that for evidence? This also includes attempted murder. All right, so in closing, and you see my last few videos, it's a combination of sending evidence and exposing it to you. Trust me, this is what we're doing here. This is about their money. This is the means of catching them all. <sighs> Lastly, I have no intention of committing suicide. If something does happen to me, you remember. It's for what I told you here and now and today and what's on this video. Mike Gill.